Yeah, that's right. See, why are you in the wilderness? <laughs> not like, in you the know wilderness. Me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I look so uh, big in comparison to you. What? And then somehow sometimes... I'm the one that people think is taller. I know. I don't even know how that makes sense. The neck. So stop! <laughs> Guys, Emily has a neck. really long neck if you haven't noticed. That's why she gives tall, tall energy. energy. You have like tall body short neck syndrome. <laughs> Actually, you don't have a you short neck. Stop. I'm too you just traumatized. Have, you just have an average neck. Mine no, is I above do have a short average. Neck. My ballet teacher always used to say it to me. The it's, ballet teacher? Yeah, I'm traumatized. Oh, maybe I could have been a ballet dancer then. Yeah, with my well, long neck. Rear up, maybe. <laughs> no, only because you, have, you don't have the turnout. That's what I meant. <laughs> No, I'm right now. Yeah, maybe for me. Oh, okay. Like, no, you're right though. No, I, I, am I just kneed. know that you don't I have, am yeah, knock knee. Yeah. And... I'm sorry, that sounded really bad. <laughs> no, it was so funny. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome Hi. back. Yeah. We're back to attack with another Back to Attack. Back to Attack <laughs> with another Eras Tour opener reaction. And we thought we would just go back to Phoebe Bridge's first album because you guys have been suggesting that we react to this ever since we reacted to her most recent album. And we're actually going to a festival this weekend and Phoebe will be there. So we thought, you know, we're gonna need to have at least a few days off our sleeves of knowing this album yes, before absolutely. we go and see her live. Totally, we wanted to make sure we knew all of her songs before we saw her yeah. live. And also we just really loved Punisher yeah. and really enjoyed. So I'm really excited to see what else is in her discography and what yeah. started her up. Yeah, and you guys said in the comments on our Punisher reaction that the vibe that I was sort of wanting from yes. that album is actually more in this album. So mm. I'm, I'm really excited to hear what it's like. Me too. This might end up being my favorite, favorite. of the two. It's hard to know because there's really, really, really good songs on Punisher, yeah. but maybe this is more like generically my vibe. Yes. It's called Stranger in the Alps. Stranger in the Stranger Alps. Stranger in the Alps. And we were looking at the album cover mm. and obviously I'm, I'm guessing it's Phoebe. She mm. has like a ghost painted over her, but it mm. kind of looks farmy. So like I'm giving farm mm, you today. Are. Yeah. Having this ghost on the front cover of this album and then having the skeleton costume on her second album. I think that's really, really cool. I would love to see what she does for her third album as mm. she kind of continues with that theme of wearing like a costume or a, um, yeah. a Halloween-ish kind of Yeah, because it, it's an interesting way to sort of separate her errors, mm, I feel. I agree. Um, so it's cool. going to be really, really interesting yeah. to see what she does next. Um, I just know that Phoebe's going to say some things and is going to fuck me up. I'm going to have yeah. no idea what's happening until yeah. I wrap my head around it because she's just so insanely genius with her lyrics and like yeah. the references that she makes and like the depth of them like it's it's a lot yeah yeah i am quite concerned for yeah. what we're about to hear yeah knowing knowing how complex how, a lot of the lyrics on yeah. punisher were i think that we're going to get some very very concerning things in this album i agree okay first track is called smoke signals mm -hmm. okay take it away oh dreamy guitar Oh, I already love it. Oh, it's so chill. Yeah. seems to be consistently happening with Phoebe is that I find that 
there is always seems to be a line here and there, or sorry, like a couple of lines here and there that don't actually rhyme, but it still totally, works. Totally, I completely And agree. I feel like she just kind of did that at the end yeah. there. Yeah, she's quite conversational, conversational with her, yeah. the way she delivers things. Yeah. I loved whatever was happening with the production, the guitars mm -hmm. and stuff, and it just being like super soft and mellow. <laughs> that was quite offensive. Offensive electric Not guitar. sure what she was saying though. Mm -hmm. So she says, I went with you up to the place you grew up in. We spent a week in the cold, just long enough to walden it with you. Any longer, it would have got old. Mm. Interesting. What's walden mean? Yeah, let's have a look. Oh, it's a reference to a book. Mm. It's like Phoebe is attempting to like escape or retreat, but mm. only doing it for a shorter time compared to what is sort of written in this book. So yeah. it says like it's like a half-hearted effort to retreat. I love it when songwriters do this as we've talked about with like Lana and stuff referencing other books music pop culture just moments, other arts other art shall we continue yeah, to maybe get some context hear the chorus Exactly okay. what I wanted from this album. Yeah, this Ugh. is offensive mm. entirely in its sound because I don't know what's no, going on lyrically fine. yet, but I love how she's delivering it. That and I love your right back guitar. Or something? I don't know. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think. I no, don't know, that was but it was truly illegal. insulting. No, it, yeah, it's truly yeah. insulting. <laughs> <laughs> so she says, "You, you must have been looking for me, sending smoke signals, pelican circling, mm. burning trash out on the beach." See, don't what? understand yet. Yeah, no. like what? But also, like I already know that, like the problems me. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what the fuck is that? Is that like a violin, a violin or that something? I, think I mean, it is. you know how I feel about violins. That is rude. <laughs> Given some extra details. Some interesting details. Oh my gosh. So I think we understood what she said in that first part. She yeah. says, One of your eyes is always half shut. Something happened when you were a kid. Mm. I didn't know you then, and I'll never understand why it feels like I did. That, I love that. was a beautiful run beautiful of run. lyrics. I, I loved that. I completely agree. And like, I'll never understand why I felt like I, I knew you then. Like, we're yeah. connected, or like, I understand your pain or your history. Yes. That was really fucked up. Oh my god, I'm fucked up. And then she said, <laughs> How soon is now, being a song title I assume, in an 80s sedan? You slept inside of it because your dad lived in a campground in the back of a van. Mm. You said that song will creep you out until you're dead. Oh, that yeah. is... Wait, she fucks me up when she does this actually. Mm. I love how she's like started off being, being like, we're listening to a song in the car, but that's the the car that you sleep in because your dad's this. Like, yeah, because your dad like, lived in a van like and this snowballs. song's going to creep you out. Yeah. And like, yeah. Yeah. Like you, and you know, oh, that's actually, that's, that's so an good. interesting lyric too, because it makes me then wonder like why this song would creep him out. Like maybe is the relationship with his dad. I'm sorry, dad. I'm assuming it's a he that he, she's talking about, yeah. but I don't know that, yeah, obviously. No. But whoever this person is that she's singing to or about, do they have an interesting relationship with their dad? And she can relate to that because we know about Phoebe's own relationship with her dad. And actually her dad just recently passed away, yes, which is really sad. really, really sad. We know that they've had like a bit of a tumultuous mm. relationship over the years. So does it creep, does it creep this person out because it reminds them of their dad who slept in a van I think and they so, didn't have a good relationship? Because also, you know, something happened to them as a kid, right? And she feels like she will, she understands them even though she didn't know them because maybe they both relate to having these issues with their dad. Maybe the chorus is about 
like her reaching out to her for help, you were sending me smoke signals. Mm. Oh, that. Just absolutely offensive. Just yeah. absolutely offensive, the sounds that are happening there. There's something um, happening in that chorus that's really, really concerning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like maybe the choruses are talking about, like, her, yeah, sending her smoke signals. Like, she, this person needed Phoebe's help to get through this time in her life, maybe with her relationship with her dad. Their relationship yeah. with their dad. And But, you know, the way that she words it, like, you must have been looking for yeah. me, it's kind of giving me almost, like, invisible string vibes. It's like, well, before we knew like each other... when they were kids. Yeah, yeah. like, before, before we knew each other, yeah. you must have been out there searching for me because we relate mm -hmm. to so much of each other and we connect so deeply and I feel like because I've known you each for other. so long. Mm. You must have been, yeah, looking for me in some way because we've helped each other so much now that we know now each other. Now that we other. know each other. Yeah. That's so cute. That is cute. she said there at the end about them driving together and her solving yeah. all of her pro their problems. Yeah, so mm. she said, I want to live at the Holiday Inn where somebody else makes the bed. Mm. We'll watch TV while the lights on the street put all the stars to death, which I'm guessing is just like light pollution. Like I, you can't no, see the lights I, yeah, I really the like, stars. I really like that because it's like kind of, they want to be somewhere where like someone else is looking after them kind of mm. thing. Like they're both being maybe taken care of in a way that their parents couldn't. And this uh, totally, I was just going to say, I feel like this actually fits well with this potential theme of like, we relate because we both have like yes. childhood or like parent trauma. Yes. That like, we just long for being long looked for being after. Looked someone after. else Someone's can make safe. the bed. Interesting that this lyric about Bowie mm. dying comes after like putting the all death. the stars to death. <gasps> Because oh there is, yes. if you know David Bowie, like there is a lot of a theme of like, you know, Starman and like, it's doesn't he have that character like Ziggy Stardust as well? Like there's a lot yeah. of like. I thought when you just said that was putting all the stars to death, like all the stars that she's referenced as in stars. Oh my God, you're so right. Like this is uh, like. The way that you immediately interpret that lyric is to be like, oh, the stars outside, the physical stars are being drowned out by the light, which is what she means, but it is also kind of a double meaning because like these stars have oh been God, put to death. I love lyrics like that. Depending on whether you feed it off the, the, the top line or the bottom line, the meaning of it changes. 100%. That is a lot. <laughs> I buried a hatchet. It's coming up lavender. That's so funny because it's like it feels like two, two Taylor Swift references. references. Yes, because obviously in Endgame, she I goes, bury hatchets, but I keep mouths of where I put them, and then like lavender haze. Yeah, I feel like when you bury a hatchet, you're like you know you're kind of putting something to rest. Yeah. Also, lavender's kind of known for being like a very kind of healing, soothing kind of plant and color and smell and whatnot. So I wonder if like. She's saying it's coming up, coming up lavender, as in like she's buried the hatchet and it's like bloomed into lavender. 
kind of thing. That's how I take it. That is how I take it. That's so cool. I really love that. And then, yeah, the future's unwritten, the past is a corridor. That's just a fucked up way to word that. No. What the hell? No. What the fuck? The future's unwritten, the past is a corridor? And, you know, the use of the word corridor is specifically quite interesting because I think that corridors specifically can feel quite harrowing. Harrowing, absolutely. this tunnel yes. that you can get yourself stuck Locked. into yes. mentally and like over and but then there's and... doors that you can go off into so it feels really overwhelming feels right yeah, yeah it doesn't necessarily paint a really positive picture no. of how she views no. her past no and then off the back of that these next lines are really interesting too because she says i'm at the exit looking back through the hall which might be the corridor, corridor. looking back at her mm-hmm, past mm-hmm. you are anonymous i am a concrete wall that's just really fucked up. Who is anonymous though? Is it like, is, it, is she talking to her parents there? Is she talking to this person that she's been always talking to? Mm. Maybe it's like you are anonymous, like kind of like I could still feel you or like I almost like kind of like the smoke signals and like I've always known you kind of thing. Like you're anonymous because I don't know you yet. Because I mm. didn't know you yet. Or because I, I didn't know. know you because I'm looking back down yeah. the hall like into my past oh, when I didn't know you. Yeah. Or something. I'm a concrete wall. Mm. Which <sighs> could be like emotionally like blocked yeah. off, like cut off from the situation or her feelings about her past. Yeah. Could be like totally metaphorical for how she feels. Yeah. Oh my God. That Absolutely was a fucked superior. up song. That's going to take some fathoming. I am so excited to but have every- that in my life. Everything that was happening in the production of that song is Is truly offensive. I love that Phoebe touches more on like childhood issues, um, like childhood (laughs) trauma, for lack of a better word. Just relatable content. (laughs) (laughs) It is relatable content. Taylor Swift could never. No, Taylor Swift could never. Taylor Swift had two very iconic characters. The best day. Yeah, the best day. what we have for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, next song is Motion Sickness, which is the one that we might have heard before, but I can't fathom. Oh, yes. I knew it started like that. (laughs) That's all I know. No, this is not familiar. I love it, though. So she said, I hate you for what you did and I miss you like a little kid. I love that. I faked it every time, but that's all right. I can hardly feel anything. I hardly feel anything at all. Wow. Okay. So is she talking about a relationship here? Because I feel like at the beginning, like her saying, I miss you like a little kid and then I Mm. faked it. Is she talking? Is that like a sexual reference? I think that it might be. Oh. oh, yes. That's relatable. Yeah. Offensive guitar. Yeah, the guitars so far in these two songs are relatable chorus. Yeah, it was for the motion if, sickness. If the girly. motion sickness is literal. Then that is relatable for you. <laughs> wow. So she said, I have emotional, emotional motion, motion sickness. sickness. Okay, so immediately it's not literal. Somebody roll the windows down. Yes. There are no words in the English. English? <laughs> there are no words in the English language. I could scream to drown you out. Okay, so is she kind of like. Oh my God, I love that. So she's saying she's got motion sickness from this emotional situation like the relationship maybe he's on and off maybe she doesn't know where she stands kind of thing oh my god i never knew that this happened i never knew that this happened what happened this song is about when she dated ryan adams who i didn't know that she dated ryan adams but ryan adams is the dude who did the entire cover of 1989 and nobody likes him anymore because he's like known to be like predatory and like abusive 
And that's like what this song is about. Like oh. apparently Phoebe Bridges has actually spoken out about his abusive behavior. <gasps> Such a bath. <laughs> I'm on the outside looking through, you're throwing rocks around your room and while you're bleeding on the back in the glass, mm. I'll be glad that I made it out and sorry that it all went down like it did. In hindsight- It's interesting her saying, and while you're bleeding on your back in the glass. Mm. In the glass? It actually says this line references the idiom, don't throw stones in glass houses. Now that she's separated from her partner, uh, she can see them clearly as if through a pane of glass and is able to recognize that their self-destructive behaviors made the relationship toxic. Yeah, because you're throwing rocks around your room uh, and that destroys you in a way. Like, mm. yes. Yeah. Wow! Oh, and that, uh, that is also I'm just I'm on the outside so fitting. looking through mm, the, glass. the glass. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is also just That's so fitting crazy. for those toxic sort of relationships because I do think that once you finally get out, you give it sort of a few Yeah. You give it a few months and you can see it all of a sudden was. you can see it exactly for what it was. Yeah. yeah. And you're just like the fuck how we feel about that. Because that must have just been the bridge that you were bored with. Oh my god, I did. Yes, it was a bridge. I didn't even fathom that she said this. So yeah, she said, yeah. you said when you met me, you were bored. That's a fucked up thing to say to someone. That's so fucked up. And you, you were in a band when I was born. Okay, so he is significantly older, which is what I thought. Oh but I don't god, know how much older. That's such a T way of saying but that. But that's... You were in a band when I was born. Kind of fucked up. That's kind of fucked up. I, I I love that she's just saying it so just like Casually, matter of factually. Like, but I think as a listener, it really points to she doesn't need to say anything no. more complex than no, that to show right. that, that it was, was problematic. problematic. <laughs> you you're right. Were, you were old enough to already be Super in a subtle. band when I was a literal infant it's what is so going on good in terms of like how yeah it's subtle but it has a lot of meaning yeah behind it. and then the last quote yeah. she changed the lyric didn't she she did she says i have emotional motion sickness i try to stay clean and aloof without it uh, oh my god and that also makes so much sense for a toxic relationship yeah. like you gotta try and almost wean yourself off of it because there is those emotional highs and lows. I really, I really enjoyed that, that song. One. Okay, track three is called Funeral. Oh dear. Okay, all right, we might be getting- <laughs> A dark one now. Yeah, darker again. <laughs> Interesting, okay. Oh, here we go. Oh! Super rocky? Yeah, it sounds rocky. Oh, okay. No. Oh, <laughs> this is not where I thought it was going. <gasps> but this is so pretty. Oh my god. That was okay. so unexpected. I loved it. Oh my god. No, oh my what god. the fuck is this strumming? This is fucked up. I'm singing at a funeral tomorrow. Okay, yes, you are, doll. For a kid, a year older than me. Oh, that's sad. Talking to his dad, it makes me so sad when I 
think too much about it, I can't breathe. Oh, yeah, dear. fair enough. Like this dream where I'm screaming underwater while my friends are. Oh my god that was superior that was absolutely that was so superior iconic the way that that song was not what i expected it to be i love when that happens but you know it's quite interesting because obviously this first verse is quite morbid and i i would say of the songs we've heard quite self-explanatory you know yeah. immediately we know what's going on yeah. um there's not a lot of needing to read into it but mm. those those sounds that we got before just the strumming, I think could be really reminiscent of maybe like the inner turmoil that she's experiencing and having With to process funeral. the fact that these kids died. I completely agree. They're not that, they weren't that oh much older God. than her. She's having this dream about screaming underwater, mm -hmm. which feels quite like you're almost drowning yourself mm -hmm. or maybe like she's Trapped fearful of what, what yes. yeah. But then she doesn't even so care what that means. means anymore. She doesn't believe in that kind she of stuff anymore. She doesn't want someone to like, um, dissect her dream yes. and what it means. Well, I'm, I'm kind of that. fascinated by what the chorus is going to be considering yeah. those first opening lines you know she's at a funeral um, we've already kind of gotten that concept straight out of the way in the verse so I wonder what is going to happen for the chorus mm. Jesus Christ I'm so blue There seems to be a oh recurring God. theme in all three of these songs so far of her exploring to some extent like her mental health. Absolutely. Like it happened yeah. in the first song where she sort of relates to her friend about maybe like traumatic mm. experiences and stuff. Mm -hmm. The toxic relationship and maybe how that plays on her mm -hmm. mind. Mm -hmm. And, and this now one is this. almost like she's going to a funeral and it's kind of bringing up these feelings that she's always kind of down. That's what it feels like so far. Like that chorus was just, Jesus Christ, I'm so blue all the time. And that's just how I feel. Mm. Always have and I always will. I always have and always will. It reminds me of the um, Gracie Abrams. She has a lyric that says, um, I'm happiest when I'm sad. Mm. Um, I think some people can get so used to ooh, feeling yeah. low, like especially if you maybe haven't had a great childhood and stuff. Like it's so part of your uh -huh. normal day to day that it's difficult to imagine a reality in which you don't feel low. You just know how to operate with that and mindset. And I think the sadness sometimes can feel comforting. I love that the song is called Funeral, even mm. though it's just like that first lyric that we get because it's kind of like, why did she call it that? You know, and I, I, I do feel like so far it must be, yeah, like that that's brought on the, the the feelings but it's actually not about the funeral it's about the fact that she's always feeling down yeah yeah well i mean it's going to be interesting to see where it goes where it yeah. where it goes yeah oh just just beautiful yeah this is So that whole thing was, as you said, sort of more like an exploration of her own mental health and all of that. But then she still brought, brought it back, back to this funeral yeah. and maybe why these feelings are particularly present for her. Oh Wishing I was someone else feeling sorry for myself when I remembered someone's kid is dead. She's literally like this whole verse is just like, I'm fucking going through it. Yeah. I'm so fucking depressed. We're joking about killing ourselves. Yes. But then I remembered that someone's actually dead. Actually dead. And I... It almost like puts, puts into perspective yeah, puts her into perspective. own suffering. Absolutely. This is a fucked up 
No, this is a fucked up song. No, and it, like everything, once again, the production. No, immediately, you guys are so right. Like the production already He's on this album so far is, yeah. yeah. I love that verse so, so much. Yeah, that, that was, was great. really good. Loved how she brought it back to the kid whose funeral she's yes. about to sing and at. I, and I think that that's just, that kind of songwriting she does a lot. And I think is it's really special. The way she kind of threads a theme throughout a song even though a lot of the song is actually about something else. Yeah, you're so right. She yeah, she does seem to do that a lot, doesn't she? Ending it on and it's 4 a.m. and I'm doing nothing again. Like it's yeah. a real hopeless kind of way to end the song in the way because it's just like, well, and I'm awake. This is just a cycle <laughs> that repeats. Is, yeah. Makes perfect sense coming off the chorus, her saying, I've always felt this way and I mm. always will. And then her saying, it's 4 a.m. and I'm awake yes. again. And yep. that's how she ends it. Just, yeah. I'm awake again. This and is just again, how it is for me all the time. It's tapping back into how I always has and always will. Yep. Sort of repeat Tie the back cycle in. of the entire song. Absolutely. Like, this just always happens. Oh my God. That's, that, was, that was amazing. I'm loving this. That I'm was really, really, really great. I already know that I'm going to have this album on repeat. Yeah, this is absolutely offensive. Okay, Demi Moore. Oh, wow. Okay, wow. She just, she loves to reference famous people, she doesn't does. she? I'm very intrigued to see how Demi Moore is wrapped up into this. Oh, a bit more of that kind of eerie vibe. Potentially. Perhaps. Oh, wow. Oh, the chorus was just I don't the, I don't want to be alone, alone don't anymore. want to be alone anymore. Wow. Okay, okay, so I think that the whole first verse was about, like, sexting someone. It, uh, absolutely. Take a p dirty picture, babe. I can't sleep and I miss your face. In my hands and in my knees, tell me what you want to do to me. Tell me what you'll do, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. I love, like, I don't know, I feel like Phoebe sings about topics like this in such a, like, kind of casual like chill way and I really love that about her like and, mm. and I think that this is just her personality and kind of the person that she is in general like I love when she spoke out about abortion mm. recently and actually talked about her experience with having one mm -hmm. I think that just takes so much bravery and also just like there's no shame with her like I feel like she really likes to remove the shame around a lot of topics and like also sexual kind of topics as well I completely agree with everything that you said and I and I yes I love how she words these things like not in a way that like sounds sexy no or anything like that it's just that like it's having sexual truth. needs is something that like literally yeah. every fucking human has yes i wonder where demi moore's gonna come in yeah it. i'm so intrigued <laughs>
wait, this is really interesting because the first verse is so like kind of matter of fact and like, you know, we're sexting because this is what I want to do. Like mm. I don't want to be alone anymore. But I feel like the second verse is like something's kind of gone wrong. Like it got quiet on the other line, mm. said the sun was coming up and I laughed until I couldn't breathe. Now I'm too tired to go back to sleep. Now I can't breathe and I can't sleep. I don't want to be stoned anymore. I don't want to be stoned anymore. Actually, maybe mm. something hasn't gone wrong. I'm trying to fathom. I'm trying to fathom. It yeah, maybe quiet. it's like it just got quiet on the other line because yeah. like they've been talking all night. For There's nothing time. left to say. The yeah. sun's coming up like... Because mm. she's stoned, she's laughing so much at nothing. <laughs> and then she's just like, I don't want to be stoned anymore because I can't stop laughing. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I know. It's, yeah. I'm trying to fathom her, like, her vibe. Yeah, yeah. Like, what is the vibe? I, like, I'm so glad that I clicked on this because <laughs> never would have fathomed it myself. Yeah. I don't want to be stoned Demi anymore. Demi more. Stoned Demi more is why it's called Demi more. <laughs> Uh, the title stemmed from God. someone mishearing this lyric as I don't want to be stoned Demi Moore. So I'm guessing she's like maybe played it for oh someone before God. she recorded it or whatever and someone Wait, thought that's I feel what like she was I need saying. To, I need to hear it again. I don't want to be stoned anymore. I, <laughs> that's so funny. I really liked that song. Me too. That I like was that great. One as well. you know what? I'm going to go back. I'm going to put a love heart next to smoke signals. Beautiful. Motion sickness. Yeah. So basically every song and so far. Honestly, because yeah, all of them. Do you know what? Same though. They've like, all been absolutely offensive. Wow. Okay. okay. The next song is called Scott Street. Scott, Scott Street. Scott Street. Okay. Interesting. Oh, offensive. Oh. This feels like almost it could be a Taylor Swift song. I was going to say like breathe. Scott yes. Street feel like a stranger. Captivated by that guitar. I, agree. I just love the strumming that's happening here. Totally. Um, but she said, walking Scott Street, feeling like a stranger with mm. an open heart, open container. I wonder what that means, open container. Like, mm. okay, yeah, keep going. Mm. I've got a stack of mail and a tall can. It's a shower beer. It's a payment plan. Oh, cool. So that's like, you know, what stack of mail and is in the tall can. Like I've got a stack of mail and a tall can mm. and it's a beer and a payment plan. Mm. Like in the mail, a payment plan has come. I love that. That's you really cool. You are right. I was not able to fathom that. And this says that an open container is law enforcement shorthand for an unauthorized alcoholic drink open in public. And she's got like a can of beer. Uh, and the mail as she walks down Scott Street. Wait, that's actually a really, really cool progression of lyrics. Like, it's almost like she's building on the lyric each time. You know, walking Scott Street, I wonder if this is like maybe a street that she lived on at some point. It says that it's really close to a rehearsal space that she used to rent with her ex-boyfriend where she wrote many songs on this record. Spending money and I earned it when I'm lonely, that's when I'll burn I it. I love that lyric. Wow, is that just like retail therapy? Like I burn through my money when, when I'm, I'm lonely. lonely. Like I'm going through it and I'm... that's relatable. That's very relatable. That is relatable. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Do Is that the whole chorus? Oh yeah, that's the whole oh chorus. God. 
I just read that there's a Song Exploder episode on this song where she actually breaks it down. <gasps> if you guys don't know the podcast Song Exploder, it's actually really offensive. Yeah. Like they'll get certain artists to come on and like pick a song of theirs and they like break down everything with it, like the lyrics and the production. How they wrote it. There's some really offensive ones. Haim did it with Summer Girl, I think. But oh our my god, one and is... oh the um, Go Your Own Way, Fleetwood where Mac. Lindsay Buckingham speaks about what he was going through, like when he wrote that, and like, oh my that god, is no, it's actually honestly one of the most offensive things I've ever heard. No, Song Exploder is a great podcast. So actually, it seems like this song, from what I'm understanding, from what she spoke about on Song Exploder, because she was on Song Exploder with Marshall Vaughan, who I think is a co-writer yeah. on this song, and it's actually more about a relationship of his than it is of hers. Oh. Yeah, maybe it'll make a little bit more sense or come together yeah. later on. I should There was so much happening production wise in that verse that was just deeply offensive. Deeply concerning. There was like something happening with a guitar. I think there might have been something happening with a violin or something. Yes, then the fucking like drums came assumption. in. No, this was rude. For a second there, it was giving debut. Oh. <laughs> like, I asked you, how is your sister? I heard she got her degree. And I said, that makes me feel old. You said, what does that make me? Mm. Okay, so this person that she's talking to must be a bit older again. That's so, that's cool. I really that like really that. That is really cool. That's yeah, great. Yeah. I like Especially how she's worded it, all of that. It might be his younger sister. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> exactly. Then she says, I asked you, how is playing drums? Said, it's too much shit to carry. Mm. And what about the band? You said, they're all getting married. See, that's really interesting because we know in Punisher there is a song about a guy as well that used to play drums for her. It, this this Marshall Vaughan guy was an ex-boyfriend and a bandmate of hers. He said in Song Exploder, this person did love me, but they were also working against me. So I wonder if they're ashamed of that kind of thing and if they've grown up. Yeah, I think it's about the two of them. I think it's about the two of them. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense because it's also like the ex-boyfriend and mm -hmm. the place that they rented and mm -hmm. made music yeah. together and stuff. Um, this is an interesting song. This no, is very interesting. Once again, production-wise, I'm fucked up. Yeah, I I'm completely up. agree. <laughs> speakers just died <laughs> Loved that whole outro situation with like the bells yes, and everything going on there. Kind of gave a, a bit of a playful vibe and a bit of a like a childlike yeah. innocence to it, which is interesting with the lyrics saying like, don't be a stranger, like almost yeah. like a lightheartedness to it. Yeah, and also the fact that it's called Scott Street and that like it starts yeah. with her walking down Scott Street now. Like now I'm picturing her like riding, riding a, bike a bike on the down. same street yeah. or something. Halfway through. Halfway through the album. Killer is the next song. Killer. Mm. Mm. Oh, Ooh. piano moment. Not what I was expecting. <laughs> okay, no, not at all, not at all. Oh, this sounds like it's gonna be sad. Yeah. We haven't 
haven't had a piano song yet, have we? No, no, I don't think we have. They've all been like quite guitar-y. Sometimes I think I'm a killer. Oh. Okay. I'm scared you in your house. I even scared myself by talking about dawn on your couch. But I can't sleep next to a body. Even harmless in death. Plus I'm pretty sure. Okay. What is with Jeffrey Dahmer being referenced in so many songs? Um, People are really quite captivated, captivated by what happened there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it makes it's sense. Quite interesting. In a way, it makes sense. Like when he is such a famous serial killer. Yeah. I feel like I'm getting from this verse, <laughs> like she, maybe she's just sort of like questioning just maybe the darkness, darkness in herself. Yes, absolutely. And like trying to analyze that. Yeah, absolutely. I got that too. She said, sometimes I think I'm a killer. Mm. I scared you in your house. Mm. I even scared myself by talking about Dharma on your couch. Oh, I love that. That's a cool. But I can't sleep next to a body, even harmless in death. Plus, okay. I'm pretty sure I'd miss you and fake sleep, faking sleep to count your breath. That makes sense because she starts by saying sometimes I think I'm a killer yeah. and she scared herself by talking about Dharma on the couch because mm. maybe she's like she's thinking about like do I have the capacity to kill mm. someone yes. and like but I but I couldn't sleep next to a body even harmless in death plus I'm pretty sure I'd miss you and fake sleep faking sleep to count your breath like she's thinking about the fact that like she could kill this person next to her mm. but is like actually I'm not going to do that. Totally. I, even harmless in death is still throwing me a little bit. Even harmless in death. Yeah, like I can't sleep next to a body that's dead, even though it's harmless in its death. Yeah. Uh, because that still doesn't make me feel good. Totally, yeah. So she's like, like you can't harm me in return because yes. you're dead, but actually I'd miss you. I actually, I so don't I'm not want gonna that. do that. <laughs> I love the psychoanalyze. Okay, yeah, of she's her um, of her intrusive thoughts in a way. Yes. Mm. Oh, we have a harmony. killer in me tame the fire in you or is there nothing left to do for us mm. i am sick of the chase but i'm hungry for blood and there's nothing i can do okay interesting so now she's kind of yeah. flipping it to be about the dynamic of the relationship yeah. can we work this out can we balance each other out can we work through our struggles together maybe in a way the genius annotation says can the killer mm. meaning my desire to have someone close mm. Tame the fire, meaning the autonomy of another person. Wow. Like that individualism, like the fact that you yeah. are your own And it's almost person. exploring that thought of having such close intimacy that you desire almost kills that individuality in a way. Kills. Mm -hmm. Kills. Mm. Which might be the key word here. Maybe she's not actually fantasizing about or like considering the fact that like mm. she could just kill this person, but killing Their who they are now by wanting them close and like having a having a relationship with them. And maybe she feels like she always kills her relationships because she wants them to be so close. Or like she kills a version yeah. of who they are because people aren't the same once they're in a yeah. relationship in some way like so there is a version of you that exists when Without you're a single me. individual mm -hmm. that kind of dies mm -hmm. when we're in a relationship Absolutely. together yeah okay that's fucked yeah i'm trying to fathom yeah, i'm trying to fathom. <laughs> But 
when I'm sick and tired and when my mind is barely there, when a machine keeps me alive and I'm losing all my hair, I hope you kiss my rotten head and pull the plug. Know that I've burned every playlist and I've given all my love. I've burned every playlist. It says here telling them that she wants them to know that she's burned every playlist mm. could be her way of saying that the music she listened to which was a major part of herself yes. has become irrelevant now that the events of the relationship are over oh tea okay. yeah. I actually I think I need to keep listening to the song please 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 before I form my full opinion yeah yeah that violin oh he's a bit different this time That's different. So there were some lyric changes in that chorus. Yes, absolutely. Can the killer in me tame the fire in you? I know there's something waiting for us. Mm. I am sick of the chase, but I'm, I'm stupid, stupid in love. love and, and there's, there's nothing, nothing I can, I can do. do. What? What? It says that it explores the dark corners of her psyche while struggling in a relationship. Mm. Bridges imagines the idea of her own death to cope with her insecurities and fear of abandonment. I feel like there's like an element of like, um, I don't know, like kind of her talking about maybe self-sabotaging the relationship or like kind of like the archer, like combat, I'm ready for combat kind of thing, like killer, like I kind of come into these relationships like expecting things to go badly and therefore like the chase and whatnot they're constantly going around in circles because of her own kind of role in that relationship as the killer as well like that's what i'm kind of like i don't know there's much to fathom but that's kind of the tr- tr- no, I, I think that you might be right because it even says here that she said in an interview that the song is entirely about toxic energy and toxic feelings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. It was really nice to get a little piano break though. Yeah, I thoroughly I really enjoyed that and I really, really loved the violins in that song. Yeah. The next song is called Georgia and I just want to say one of our favourite songs of all time oh, yes. is, is Georgia by Vance Joy. So this yes. has a lot to live up to. This does have a lot to live up to. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Oh, another, another piano. piano! Okay, okay, okay. Georgia, oh. 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 I love it. And when he gets older, he might be the one. Oh my gosh, she's talking to He might be the fucked up i'm sorry i don't know what i just heard <laughs> i think for a second there i was thrown by the line and when he gets older he might be the one i was like is that like kind of predatory but i don't think it is i think it's more like i i think from what oh. she's continued to say i think it might be more like we're too young yes for this to be serious yes but when he's older he might be the one like yes. maybe we could cycle back to this relationship because he's so perfect because she says Georgia, Georgia, I love yeah, so your son. Yeah, so she's talking to, like, his mother. Mum, yeah. Wow. And when he gets older, he might be the one. Yeah. Georgia, Georgia, he has beautiful bones, and he never lies or picks up his, his phone. Bone. I love So that I think lyric. it might be more, um, <gasps> if this came when we were older, he could be someone that I marry yes, or, or something like that. maybe they're like both that. just still a bit too young for, that, for, like, it to be like, okay, he's the one for sure. So good. Sometimes in the pouring rain, he'll fall in the mud and get back up again. And if you find me, so good.
all the chorus. Okay. Oh, no, it wasn't. There was a pre-chorus there. The pre-chorus was, and sometimes in the pouring rain, he'll fall in the oh. mud and get back up again. Oh, why is that such wholesome lyrics? It is cute. Oh, my God, and the chorus is, and if you find me, will you know me? Will you take me or will you fall? This song is really, really beautiful. It has this energy that I can't explain. And what the fuck are these lyrics? These lyrics are offensive. Being like she's building him up. Like yes. when things are hard or when things are down, he'll get He's back up resilient again. Like that's and... the one thing that she's choosing to like highlight about him in this chorus. And then, and will you find me? Will you know me? Mm, oh my will God. you take me? Oh my God. What if she's just talking? What if she doesn't know this boy yet? What if she doesn't know this boy yet? And she's imagining, she's imagining her future partner. Comes from the fact that she dated someone from Georgia. <gasps> there is no Georgia. It's like Georgia oh the state. Oh my God, Georgia the state. Yeah, I love your son. Uh, like this boy uh, from Georgia. Um, that kind of implies to me that maybe she did know mm, this person mm, and maybe it's not about like an imaginary kind of perfect mm, person. Here's my day plan, here's my new machine. He's a fine new addition, so young and so clean. Because I feel like she's kind of once again daydreaming about like maybe, you know, finding this new person. Like mm. he's a fine new addition, so young, so clean. So but then it's like she's fearing that he will, something bad will happen to him if she yeah. does find this love. Yeah. yeah. I wonder what she means by here is my day plan, here's my my new machine she tweeted that it means i'm going to be a new person when i get this attractive person to like me wow. yeah Sometimes when he looks at me. chorus was different too yes. she said and sometimes when he looks at me i know he needs you you're all that he sees what does that mean what the what and then this chorus and if i breathe you will it kill me will you have me or watch me fall if i fix, fix you, you will you, you hate, hate me? me and would you fuck this and let us fall oh my god i guys i have the no idea i have no idea, <laughs> no idea. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it, though. it says I love these it. lyrics express the toxicity of this relationship. Mm. Interesting. Both having or not having their love could kill mm. her. Mm. I feel like that could also kind of be, you know, if she, this was a relationship that she was thinking about, like, you know, at the beginning, she's thinking about someone having all these really perfect qualities and will they find her? Will she meet them or whatnot? And then she's kind of starting to think about, okay, but then if we were in a relationship, would I fuck I it would up? I would still fuck it up. 
how this song started like really quite positive, positive. about this other person and it sort of moved into <laughs> being us. quite negative I know but, like I was like oh is it gonna be a happy love song like no obviously not no obviously not yeah. I like if I fix you will you hate me because I feel like that could also be maybe representing like maybe in her toxicity she feels like she needs to fix people or try to point out the things in them that they need to fix which then ends up building a lot of like resentment and hate in the relationship also coming off the back of killer yep yeah. Where she feel, might feel like she is the killer in the relationship. Or like quite controlling yes. or whatever. And that sort of, I feel like, is coming up at the end of these lyrics Absolutely. here. Like if I, like, if we're actually in a relationship, then... my tendencies then, come out... Yes, and I'm trying to, like, pick happen. up on your flaws or control you or whatever, like, would it actually work out? Yeah. Or would we just fuck this up? I don't know, this is really That's what I'm kind of getting a first listen, but God, could be so much more to that song. I would I'd love your guys' thoughts if you know this song much better than obviously what we do because some of you guys have had years with these songs yeah so please. i think there's like been some fathoming that's happened I liked for that you guys though. that was that yeah. could go into the offensive georgia category yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow okay next song next song is called chelsea another name chelsea back to that electric guitar yes beautiful sounds are also yeah. perfect yeah the sounds on this album are rude for a chemical balance you sure know that I feel like on first listen like you just don't know where you are or what's happening like there's no. no for a chemical imbalance you sure know how to ride a train your revolution is a deathbed and the music is your maid what, what? <laughs> she tweeted even though you have no personality other than your drug addiction you are hot and cool that's what she said that that means your revolution is a deathbed and the music is your maid I've got nothing, I'm sorry, that, that, that's too smart for me. <laughs> There's a something here that might help us fathom the rest of the song. Okay. This song is about Nancy Spungen, who was killed in 1978 at Chelsea Hotel. Oh. Many believe she was killed by her then boyfriend, Sid Vicious of the Sex Pistols. So it's Tea. all just a story. Okay. When someone comes a knocking with a needle on a tray, which I'm guessing is just a drug reference, mm. only your lonesome lies beside you, for you told me not to stay. What? About your Is she yourself? writing from this the, woman's yeah, perspective? perspective? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. That would maybe that help me make some of this make sense. You are somebody's baby. Some mother held you near. Wow. That's a lot. That's actually quite a That's fucked up quite line. quite fucked up, yeah. No, it's not important. They're just, they're just pretty words, my dear. There is no distraction that can make me disappear. No, there's nothing that won't remind you I will always be here. What? Whoa, whoa. Okay, so... Is this meant to be, like, her ghost? Yes, her ghost. Saying it, it's like, oh, even though I'm Gone. dead, yeah. or maybe you've killed me, I'll always be here. This is so dark. I love it though. Yeah. I feel like Phoebe does the most random shit. She's like, no, this girl that suffered at the hands of this frightful man, I'm going to write a song about her ghost coming back to haunt him. Yep, I'm going to do that. Yep. I just say I love that she's saying you are somebody's baby, some mother held you near. Like, I feel like that's really bringing it back to the humanness of this person and how yes. he was loved and nurtured and what he maybe has turned into. And then coming it's off It's not that, always what he was. Totally. Mm. Uh, coming off that, um, no, it's not important. They're just pretty words words my dear if she's referring to that line beforehand it's almost like well it's actually irrelevant now after what you've done to me 
it's irrelevant that someone loved you once and you were just a baby once and you were innocent because you are no longer innocent because you've killed me. This is a lot. <laughs> And you spit the blood back. You spit the blood back, baby. I'm amazed that you're all right. Oh, so long, prison boy. I won't be home with you tonight. <laughs> prison boy. Oh, my God. It is a ghost. It is a ghost. We're finally fathoming. Oh, my God. Phoebe's mind. Yeah, we are. We're like, this is, this is what it has to be. And we were right. It says the ghost of Nancy Sponge is saying goodbye to him, who is now in prison for her murder. Sid initially spent only four days on Rikers Island before being bailed out by Virgin Records. Well, I wonder what the spit, spit the blood back. Yeah, split, this line could have multiple split. interpretations. Yeah. First, splitting blood could refer to hurling insults at Nancy, as the couple mm. were known for their bouts of domestic violence. Mm. Alternatively, this line could be about literally spitting blood out. One of the most famous photos of Sid has him covered in blood from his face. Ew. Okay. I'm a bit disturbed. Well, at least we've fathomed the ghost yeah, situation. Yeah, I kind of love really, it though. That's really it's great. very iconic. Yeah. Phoebe's got some balls. It's, it's I kind will of say. iconic, even if we're like, what? Oh, it's it's it makes it more iconic. I think. It, I, I completely she's agree. Just fucking me up. I completely agree. She's we have to really like fathom these things. Breaking my brain. <laughs> And I love this ghost. I love, love this ghost. ghost. Love this ghost. Oh my god. And then the next lyrics. And for generations, mm. they'll romance us, make us more, or much less than ever was before. The wow. Chelsea and the floor. <gasps> oh! oh! He killed himself. So that's what happened. The media started over romanticizing their relationship and making more of it than it, mm. there ever actually was. Mm. Bridges is suggesting that following generations will continue to either exaggerate or mm. look down upon their relationship instead of seeing it for what it actually was. Mm. That is crazy. <laughs> Just so fucked up by that song. I like that it's called Chelsea because she was murdered at the Chelsea yeah. Hotel. Like, so like and it ghost. makes sense, yeah, mm. that it's sort of like her ghost singing this mm. because her ghost would sort of reside mm -hmm. where she was killed. I don't think that I have the capacity to analyze no, more of that. That no. was just a lot. That was a lot. I'm just very. Nancy the ghost is an icon. <laughs> Nancy the ghost is. An icon. <laughs> Anyways, next song. What's would it called? you rather? Would you rather? Okay, okay. I feel like this might be more upbeat. Oh, yeah. Oh. We're back to an acoustic guitar. Oh, okay, I like this. Concerned. I oh had my to god! Playing. I feel like I'm in such a silly mood after that last song. Like as soon as that guy came in, I'm like, ah! 
What is happening? I agree. Um, also, those opening lines, simply relatable. Would you rather drown or burn alive? Um, honestly, would also rather drown. She said playing would you rather when it comes to fire. Yes. You always say that you'd prefer to drown. Yes. Same. Oh, totally. This is really interesting that the song is called Would You Rather and she's starting us off mm. with that. This is see, this is again one of the things that she does. It's just very concerning. She's starting us off with this game that they're playing, which then leads to would you rather fire or you know drowning? And then that tells us that this person has a fear of fires, which then is leading to this burning down situation. Yeah, like, you were still in the ambulance when the cops suggested you're the one who tried to burn it down. Like, do you understand? Like, it's so concerning that she builds on like a... She just builds on like one little thing in such a drastic way and takes the song to a completely different place. Like the title of the song is it's so. The prompt. It's like the prompt, but it's not the core. Uh, yeah, I'm just no, I, I, no, I, no, <laughs> I'm just concerned. I understand what you're trying to vocalize. <laughs> You maybe like you maybe understand. it's like it's like maybe <laughs> she knows that that can't be the case because we're played would you rather and, and you you'd know. prefer to drown like why would you play with fire no, if you prefer to drown to- yeah, like you're right. either so way much context. either way it builds like this meaning it's oh quite my interesting God, it's very interesting and it says that mm. it is about her brother and domestic violence and when their house caught on fire when when they when she was 19 Whoa. sorry their mum was physically hurt in the fire and one of the cops suggested that her brother. brother had something to do with it, but he didn't. It says oh he God, didn't have so anything to do with it. Domestic violence, like maybe her mum's partner. Potentially, wow. yes. But there are more lyrics that we've heard. Oh my gosh, of course, yes, we heard, heard that whole fucking chorus. Yeah, come to find out, I'm um, a can on a string. You're on the end. We is that like you know? Though, remember when you were a kid and you'd like get two cans and like put a string through it and like you could like hear each other uh, from a distance? Uh-huh, is that uh-huh. what that is? I'm a can on a string and you're on the other end. Yes, yes, absolutely. And he sung that. The guy. Mm. I'm a can on a string. You're the end. And then she says, "We found our way out." And he says, "Of the suicide pact of our family and friends." And then she said, "In the background, I'll be waiting." They both say, "I'll be waiting." Wow. Is it like her and her brother, like, get through this shit together? You know? Like, you know, it's just them two. Yeah. It's just them two on the each end of the can of the string. Like, they've always kind of been in it together in a way. And, you know, they've, they've made their way out of the suicide pack. Like, as in, like, everyone else around them is, like, very mentally unwell. Like, their family, they've grown up grown up in vi- an environment where people, like, maybe are, have been committing suicide. Mm. And it's, like, just them two, they're getting out of this situation together. I'm concerned. The annotation does kind of suggest that. Oh, my God! But it's, like, they got through those, like, difficult times in their family and stuff together. I like the vibe. I like the vibe, too. Oh! It's very light. same face i'm guessing because it's her brother yeah absolutely yeah. i laid awake as someone shoved you up against a wall quarantined in a bad dream he's half the man and you're twice as tall oh see i thought the shoved you up against a wall might be the allusion to like the domestic violence in the household oh yes and stuff like i lay awake as someone shoved you up a wall they're like experiencing this domestic oh abuse my God. he's being pushed up against a wall she's lying awake like i can't do anything about this it's like i'm stuck in this bad holy dream shit. but the bad dream is our reality holy shit you're right and then you're twice the man he He's half the man and you're twice as tall. That's fucked up. Oh, so pretty. That's really nice. Oh, it's got such a... That's 
going back into the chorus, but that was such yeah. a lovely bridge. It was so different to the rest I'm of the song. I'm very sure, yeah, next time I see you, you'll show me a hundred different ways to say the same things. Interesting. I wonder, do you think she's talking about her brother there? Yeah. Or... I don't Next know. Next time I see you, you'll show me a hundred different ways to say the same things. Or is it kind of like she's talking to her parents there? Like, no matter what, you always let me down. You find a different way to let me down every time. That's a fucked up Next thing to say. Next time I see you. <laughs> Could also be in a positive way. Like, um, you know, me and my brother, we just get it, you know? Like... And yeah, totally. It's him, like you'll show you'll me a always... hundred different ways to say the same thing. Yeah, like, that you'll you always me. show me yeah. in a hundred different ways that like you understand what we've like what, we've what been I've through. been through because you were there with me, and it's like totally. I can't tell if it's like a positive or yeah. if it's like a dig. Like I can't fully always... make sense yeah. of that lyric. That's an interesting. I like... like that though as well. Like yeah. it could mean two different things depending on how you look at it. Nice. Yeah, that's that coming out of the chorus each yeah. time. It's really... oh, that was lovely. Oh. Oh, oh, so pretty, so pretty, and that's nice as well because it is kind of celebrating that relationship she has yeah. with her brother, and it has that light-hearted feel to it. But she did, she did change it because she says, "And it used to be in the background, I'll be waiting," and then in the last line, instead, she says, "And when you touch down, I'll, I'll be, be waving." waving. Yeah. Oh, like when he touches down, as in like maybe when he comes to visit her. Yeah, I'll be waving. Okay, like we've I'll always got waving. this like close yeah. relationship because of what we experienced together and stuff. Oh. That makes me think that it is more positive, that bridge, and that she's yeah. talking about him. Yeah. Oh, I really like that. And that's kind that. of the overall vibe of the song. Yeah, even it call, being called Would You Rather. Yeah. Like, Would You Rather is meant to be, like, a fun, fun game. Fun game that they did together yeah, to Yeah, it's like she's trying to focus on, like, the positives of their relationship and the fact that they got to you know not got to but like the fact that they have each other yeah. to understand each other in their experiences and whatnot like how she's trying to focus on the positives of how their relationships developed it. yes R despite what was happening at home absolutely which i love the reference to the ha the the game mm. it's like their coping mechanisms like the game and also the can like mm. i feel like that symbolizes like this real innocence like they're hiding out in their room kind of trying to make light of things trying totally. to have fun even if it's like metaphorical for other games that they played and stuff but there yeah. was always a lightness to their relationship where they wait they were trying to get through it together that's really sweet i'm yeah. glad that she had her brother everything sounds so pretty so on this pretty. album I, I love her voice i love the production i love the vibe and the feeling mm. that these songs give you like it's just really really nice the last song on the album is called You Missed My Heart. Mm. Interesting. <gasps> Ooh, mm. I'm intrigued. Broken to her house, source in there, drinking coke and whiskey in a bra and underwear. Oh, that's nice. So I don't know what's happening. I couldn't hear a thing. I From what I was just getting, is this also talking about her mom's boyfriend? But I don't know. Let's well, maybe. Let's okay. So she said, broke into her house, saw her sitting there drinking coke and whiskey in her bra and underwear. That would make sense if she's breaking into her mom's house. Maybe. Yeah. You're saw right. Saw her mom sitting there. Saw him in the kitchen hanging up the phone. I asked him nicely once to pack his things and go. Yeah. Like an abusive partner of her mom, like kind of related to the last song. Mm. He gave her a reassuring look, said he wouldn't leave, but I asked him one more time. This time he pulled out my sheath. What is a sheath? A close fitting cover for the blade of a knife. Oh my god. I stuck him in the back and I pulled it out slow. Oh! Is she like killing stabbing this him? person? 
And I watched him fall down. And as the morning sun rose, he looked at me and he said, Oh, okay. And that's what we're up to. Oh my God. She's talking about stabbing someone. Let's continue. Yeah. He looked at me. He said, You missed my heart. You missed my heart. You got me good. I knew you would. But you missed my heart. Oh, like you didn't fucking you kill me. You missed my heart. You didn't. You missed my heart. You missed my heart. that that's where this song title was going. Okay, well this must be- Oh! Oh my god, is it another story? No, it's a cover. Oh! Bridges said, I have this thing where I have to listen to songs over and over if I like them a lot. But then mm. when I was like, I have to play this. It's mm. an extra level. I have to get inside it. Mm. That song totally resonated with me. I couldn't stop listening to it. Mm. See, that makes sense because maybe she did feel this way mm. in a way, like resonated yeah, with her. Totally. Like, with, if it was about, like, I don't know, it sounds like someone trying to protect someone from someone. Yeah. It's going to be hard to really read into these lyrics because they're yes. not hers, but maybe we can just keep listening for the vibe. But I don't think that that's true because she says she re she resonates with it that's so true. much she that she with needed it. to be inside the song. And I think and so it's... I think that that makes sense, especially coming off the last song with her and what her and her brother went through. Like that's immediately where this song is taking me. Yeah. And I was going to say, like, I think it's an interesting interpretation of mm. yours to be like, maybe she relates to it because of this abuse yeah. she grew up with. Like, and that's why she's fantasizing about killing this person because she's relating it to the person in her household totally. that was abusive. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Um, yeah, let's think of it from that light. Mm. Mm. Looking out the window Up at the blue sky Listening to a scream Listening to a cry because that was so much I feel like now she's talking about her like her mum or you know her relationship with her in a way because it's like looking out the window up at the blue sky listening to her scream listening to her cry mm. like from yeah, the yeah this abuse. is making so much sense if she relates to it from that situation a feeling of relief came over my soul I couldn't take it any longer and I lost control I chased her up the stairs and I pinned her to the ground and underneath her whimpering I told her I could hear the siren sound. Oh my god. Mm. I rattled off a list of all the things I miss, like going to the movies with her and the way she kissed me. That's so nice. Like, I mean, it's not nice, it's so sad, but wow, I can see how she might have directly related to these lyrics. Like, these lyrics are so much. This tea. is heavy. This is really heavy. Yeah. Wow, interesting. But now yeah. she's like talking, the first one was like talking about maybe killing him. And this and one's now talking it's about like, of confronting her and being like, why? Like, I miss yeah, this, I miss this. Yeah. But also, like, reflecting on hearing her suffer. It's actually really yes. crazy. Backyard barbecues and reunions in the park. I said I missed her skin when she started laughing. While I clenched down on her wrist, she said that's quite a list. There's one thing you missed. You missed my heart. You missed my heart. Oh my god, so now she's completely flipped the well, whoever wrote this song has completely flipped the meaning of that chorus. Yeah. Because she's what? saying that's quite a list, but there's one thing that you missed. You missed my heart. And you missed my heart. Yeah. Like wow. my heart being something that you missed should be on the list of things that you miss. 
Oh my god, I'm so That's a really fucked up thing fucked up that they to do. flipped the entire meaning of this song. Yeah. Especially in a domestic violence situation where like you're comparing to like killing the guy and then missing his heart, but like the flip of the meaning is so much is so genuine and like heartfelt. In totally the this time verse. it's almost like nice. It's nice. It's not like a murder. No. <laughs> it's like I really yeah. like that though, because where mm. were they gonna go with that again? Mm. That's quite a list, but what you really missed. Oh, it's different to match that last far. verse. It's quite a list. Like last time it was like, um, you missed my heart, you got me good, good. I knew you would, but yeah. you missed my heart. Yes, and she's this repeating is the... that's quite a list, but what you really missed, you missed, missed my, my heart. heart. You're right, mm. yes. I really like that re- repetition of the quite a list. Yeah. yeah. Running through the parking lot, running through the fields, policemen on my back, something hit my skull and cracked. Oh. They dragged me off to jail, said a million dollar bill, where I tried to tie a noose, but I failed and I broke loose. Oh I went my racing God. through the prison yard, shot down by. Now this chorus is going to be about like how the prison guard who shot her missed her heart. So she's oh like, "Oh my dead god!" Now. Right? Yeah, I think uh, uh, I think so. Oh yeah, my yeah, god. yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that. So yeah, running through the parking lot, policeman on my back, went off to jail, million dollar bail. Um, tried to tie a noose but failed and I broke loose so tried to kill herself yeah. which actually is also fitting with some of the other lyrics yes. on this song about like Suicide. in terms of her relating mm-hmm. to this yeah mm-hmm. went racing through the prison yard shot down by a tower guard he got me in the shins and he got me in the arms went to the infirmary to like cremate her where the priest read my last rites and just before everything went dark like literally said, before I actually died I said you missed my heart because he shot me in the shins and the arms oh my fucking but not God. in the heart this song is a lot this the song fuck? is crazy oh my god oh so now it's like the yes. original one again because he's someone's died again but it's like he and I uh. Okay, yeah. So now this for, for, fourth like verse. For, can I talk? <laughs> fourth, fourth, fourth verse is like this is so like it's almost like you could skip mm. that entire chorus because mm. like and just before everything like the end of the third verse and the end of the chorus is and just before everything, everything went, went dark. dark. Yeah, so you could almost miss that. It's like. They strapped me in the gurney, took me to the infirmary where the priest read my last rites. 
and just before everything went dark yeah, the most poetic dream. dream came flowing like this is like literally her life yes. flashing before her, her eyes. eyes when she's about to die and thinking of all these like positive yes. memories and stuff yes. even though the life ended up being quite tragic absolutely this song is crazy it's crazy. actually really long as well seven minutes yeah it's really interesting that she chose to do a cover for I this know. album i think it's really cool actually when artists do that like i think it's really nice when you can feel like someone has resonated so deeply with the song that they need to make it their own in a way like I, I really 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 loved this album me too I definitely think I preferred the first half of the album more than the second half um but I don't know if that's just because I get a bit overwhelmed by the time I've listened to the f the you know the first five songs then you're just like oh I taking in new things is hard totally <laughs> sometimes it can be really hard to then like take like remember what it is that you've already yes. heard yeah it Especially blends. when an album has like a similar vibe all the way through, mm. like it can feel like when you don't know an album super well, like you sort of get to the end of it and you're like, I can't tell if this is all sounding similar yes. or if it's just that I've heard so much of the same and I, I need to totally. like just take a break and come back to it. So excited to see what she does next. Yes, me okay, too. Okay guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Yes, and glad that we finally did this. We'll see you soon in another one. Yes, bye. bye.